So in this video, I'm going to talk about the arc length for uh, vector functions. Okay. Uh, let me say we have a function like so. Um, it goes like that. Okay. Another function which is which may be an ellipse and uh, another function. Let's say it, it is a helical one. Okay goes like that right and uh, let me call any point on the ellipse as a and another point B here the starting point here a and B similarly to this and if I if I if you actually hold this point a okay I'm very bad at that and you you ask another point another friend to hold point B for you okay good enough then any and you guys just stretch this out this whole curve then this distance or this length would be L would be the arc length okay so that's what the arc length is it's 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 the length of the arc if you actually stretch it out okay and let me see um how how we can actually derive the arc length now let's say we have this function let me call it rt a vector function and we'll start with a two dimensional function okay sorry for that right and let's say that we move a certain distance on the curve in a time interval dt okay it's a small time interval and we move a certain distance so what would be the new position vector it would be dt plus t right or t plus dt which would be given by this And if I ask you the distance that you've moved, okay, the distance moved or the distance traveled, it would be simply r um, dt plus t take away rt, okay, and the modulus or the magnitude, of this whole thing because it's it's the distance we're interested in the value, okay, so we take the magnitude, okay. Let's keep this in mind and. If if I if I want to express this in terms of velocity and time, this is the distance. It would be simply be the velocity times the time interval. So the distance that you've traveled is nothing but the velocity. Now what is the velocity? it is the derivative of the distance it is r dash t okay times the time interval okay which is dd now now you this is a vector the velocity vector and here we have a value we have a distance so we just take the magnitude here okay now now dt is in a vector so it just comes out and you're left with the magnitude of r dash t and what is the magnitude of r dash t? Oh, it's the root of f dash t squared and you add g dash t squared okay the magnitude of a vector dt remains there right so we're talking about a small time dt let's say this is the curve and this point is a this point is B and you start moving from this point to this point a very short time DT there and this is the distance you move and if I if I integrate this thing from the point A to the point B okay from T equals A to T equals B what would I get I would get the arc length right I would get L which is the arc length so L is what it is the integral Okay, this is the distance when we're talking about the time interval dt. If I'm integrating this to a to b, I get the arc length. Simple. 
is nothing but the integral of this whole thing from A to B. So you get the whole the whole arc length, this whole arc length. Okay. Squared plus g dash t squared. Right. So so that was when we're talking about you know, when talking two dimensions, if we include the third dimension, then we would have a to b f dash t squared plus g dash t squared plus h dash t squared. And of course, you're uh, you're integrating this with respect to t. So that is how you find out the arc length of any function. Now, a function would be given to you like this. Okay, you would you would know what f t is, and you would know what g t is. Let's say it's t and t square, for example. So you take the derivatives, you put the values in here, you take the squares, add them, take the root, and integrate the function symbol, and then you apply the limits a to b. Okay.